Hey, what's up everybody? This is Tammy. Welcome back to our video tutorial series on beginning Sprite Kit. In this part of the series, you'll learn about the Sprite Kit game loop. The game loop is what brings your Sprite Kit game to life. A game works like a flipbook animation. You draw a successive sequence of images, and when you flip through them fast enough, it gives the illusion of movement. Each individual picture that you draw is called a frame. Games typically try to draw these frames between 30 and 60 times per second so that the animation feels smooth. This rate of drawing is called the frame rate, or more specifically, the frames per second, or the FPS. Behind the scenes, Sprite Kit runs an endless loop often referred to as, you guessed it, the game loop. For each frame, Sprite Kit calls a method on your scene named update. This is where you can add the code that you want to run for every frame. Before we jump into the demo, let's take a closer look at the game loop. As you can see, Sprite Kit is handling a lot more than just simple updates. For each frame, it evaluates actions, simulates physics, applies constraints, and renders the scene. Some of these will cover a bit more during this video tutorial series, but don't stress too much about the game loop. Understanding the basics at this level is perfectly acceptable. Okay, on to the demo. In the last video, I had you do a challenge and that was to add the zombie to the scene. So if your zombie's on the scene like mine is here, then you're ready to begin. Now this demo will happen in two parts. In the first part, we'll move the zombie across the bottom of the screen and we'll do this in the update method. In the second part of the demo, we'll actually use the touch location and have the zombie move to the touch location. The first part in working with the update method is to calculate the difference between the last update time and the delta time. So you'll need two variables to hold this because remember, the update doesn't necessarily get called at the same time every time. Head over to gamescene.swift and let's get these two variables added to help us move our zombie in a nice smooth manner. Now we're ready to add our update method. Inside our update method, not only do we want to update the last update time, but we also want to update our delta time. So let's add the following code to help us out with that. So here you can see that on line 45, we're saying if the last update time is greater than zero, then set the delta time to be the current time minus our last update time. Otherwise, the delta time is zero. Then we set our last update time to the current time. And here we're just printing it out so I could show you that it doesn't necessarily always run at the same speed every time. So let's build and run and see exactly what it looks like. So you can see here that it doesn't necessarily do it 33 milliseconds every single time. Sometimes it's 31, sometimes it's 30, sometimes it's 32. So it does vary and that's why you need to keep track of the last update time and the delta time because you'll be using the delta time for moving your sprite across the screen, your zombie across the screen. Which brings me to the next point. Let's get our zombie moving across the screen. We'll need two variables for that, one to know how many points per second to move the zombie and one for the velocity. You can think of velocity as how far and in what direction you want the zombie to move. So now let's create a function to actually move the zombie. So in our move sprite function, we're passing in a sprite, which will be our zombie, and then we're passing in our velocity. We're determining what the amount is to move based on the velocity times the delta time. And this is both for the x and the y position. This tells us how much to move our sprite. And then we're able to take the current position of our sprite, add it to the amount to move our sprite, and that's how we know where to put our sprite. And of course, we'll need to call this function, so we'll do that in the update method.
Let's build and run and see what this looks like. So now you can see the zombie running across the screen. You'll notice down here that we're logging the amount to move the zombie as well. So you can kind of get an idea of everything that's going on. Let's stop this. Okay, now we're ready for the second part of this demo, and that's to get the zombie to move to the touch location. So we'll need to add a new function for that. We'll call this function move zombie toward, and then we'll pass in the touch location. Of course, you'll need to know the touch location, so we'll have to create a variable. So scroll up to the top of the class and let's get one added. We'll use the last touch location variable to hold our last touch location. Now that we have our variable added, we can scroll back down to the move zombie toward location and start setting some of the parameters that we'll need, like the offset and the length and the direction, and of course the velocity, because that is what's moving our zombie. So here you can see that we're setting our offset based on the location of our touch minus the zombie's current location. We're doing that for both the X and the Y. We're then determining the length that we need to move the zombie and in which direction we need to move him. We're then using all of that combined to determine our velocity, which as you remember, is what we're using to move our sprite. So now, of course, we need to actually capture our touch location, and we'll do that in both the touches began and touches moved. So let's add those two functions now, and we'll put it right underneath the update method. There's our touches began, and there's our touches moved. Now we'll need to add a little code to each of these, and the code actually happens to be the same. You could create another method and just call that method, but we're just going to add the code in because it's such a small amount of code. So there it is in touches began, and let's add it in touches moved as well. So what we're doing here is we're getting the touch location, we're setting the last touch location based on that location, and then we're calling the function that sets our velocity, and that's the move zombie toward touch location. But we still haven't actually moved the zombie. We need to go back to our update method, and we need to make a minor change. First, we need to comment out our move sprite call. Then we need to add the following code. Now you notice that we're getting an error on line 77. That's because you can't subtract a CG point from another CG point. In the resources for this project, we have something called myutils.swift. Let's drag that into the project and take a look at it real quick. Now this file has been set up so you can do a lot of different functions on CG points like plus, minus, and so on and so forth. So I encourage you to take a look through this file because you'll be using this later. And in fact, there's a challenge that involves the MyUtil Swift. So please take a moment to look through this and see exactly what this file is doing. Okay, let's go back over to the gamescene.swift file. And you should notice that that error is now gone because the myutils.swift has a function in it that allows us to subtract a CG point. So with that, let's build and run and see what we have. So you can see now that the zombie is moving toward my touch. That's it for this video tutorial. And now we have a challenge waiting for you. Your challenge for this video is to rotate the zombie to face the tap location. I hope you enjoyed this video tutorial. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.